What's up, folks? This is Tony Brewer. You're listening to or watching as the case may be Cogitations. Cogitations is the podcast where we think about things, we contemplate them, we turn them over in our minds, and then we discuss them. Daniel chapter 7, verse 28, Daniel writes, Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me. My countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. And we're not going to keep the matter in our heart. We're going to talk about it. Today, we're going to talk about it's our free-for-all Friday. This acts as a question and answer session. I will do everything within my power to answer your questions. Well, I tell you what, I will guarantee an answer to your question. But you have to be okay sometimes with the answer being, I don't know. So that's just how the cookie crumbles. Anyway, we're hope you're doing well this Friday morning, more, more than likely if you're listening, according to the analytics, according to the analytics, most of you listen on the central standard time. That's 10 a.m. So this is kind of like a, a mid morning show for you. Uh, I am on Atlantic time and it's 12 o'clock whenever whenever I do this so I go for it live from 12 to 1 and incidentally I got to be very very uh strict with my time today um I have to go and prove to the Canadian government again that I know English and that I can speak English so we'll <laughs> wish me luck there I think it's just another way for the government of Canada to fleece us for six hundred dollars so there you go Hello, John Exum. Hello, Diana Harden. It's good to see you. So glad y'all are here. All right, as folks start rolling in, I've got a couple of things. Uh, for, first off, I've got two things that we're going to talk about for this show until we start taking question and answers, okay? And actually, we got a Oh, that's a good question. Um, what? John Exum said I received. It. Hold on, Connie. I'm going to get to you in a second. Let me put you up there. But John John Exum just. <laughs> well, I'm going to read his comment. And anyhow, I received an email advertising theology beer camp, featuring discussing theology while baking while drinking beer. So sad and blasphemous. Yeah, I, I tell you and. The sad thing is those folks probably, according to the world standards, are not bad people, according to the world standards. Um, they probably love Jesus with all their heart. They're just sadly mistaken. That's what bothers me so much as I look at across this world, the older I get. You know, Psalm, well, now I can't think of it. Psalm 119, is it 104? No, that's not right. Bear with me through give me a second there we go oh it is psalm 119 104 through thy precepts i get understanding therefore i hate every false way now listen i hate the false ways but i find that the older i get the less incensed I am with a righteous indignation over false ways. I still hate them. But the feeling that I get because of false ways is just overwhelming compassion. Like, man, these people need help. And I mean, like this theology beer camp, you know, that's blasphemous. I, I, I agree with you 100%. But those poor people don't, I don't think probably 90% of them probably don't understand and if you could convince them and show them the truth and convince them of the truth of God's word, they would eschew that behavior and never do it again. Sadly, it's hard to convince somebody of stuff like that. Anyway, good to see everybody. Toposh, uh, R.H. Zahad, Terry Crooks, and Scott Beck. Good morning to everyone. All right. When the New Testament says, call no one fool, what does that mean when someone is called a fool today? That's a good question. So uh, first off, we'll talk about what that cannot mean. I'm going to go to my trusty rusty e-sword, and I'm going to go to search for terms, and I'm going to go F-O-O-L, and I think we'll find 
Nope, I meant the New Testament. So it's it's used eight times, or excuse me, it's used nine times in eight verses. All right? But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever th shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. All right? And then Luke twelve twenty. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? And, of course, that's the guy that said, Hey, let's eat, drink, and be merry tomorrow. I'm going to tear my barns down and build new ones because I'm so rich my barns can't hold all my goods or all my crops or all my whatever. And God referred to this man as fool, and that's uh, the word is Aphron, and it's unwise, inconsiderate, mindless, that is stupid, by implication ignorant, specifically egotistic, uh, rash, morally unbelieving, morally rash, unbelieving, and unwise. All right. Now, is that the same? Nope. This word fool is moros, uh, probably from the base of G3466. We'll look at that. Dull or stupid, as if, or that is heedless. They, they don't heed to any moral standard. Uh, blockhead, absurd, um, impious, godless. And that, that moros, the base word, this is really, it's, it's uh, mysterion, which is mystery, something that's a secret. It's almost like, it's almost like this word here that is used, anybody, anybody that shall say to thy brother, thy fool, it's almost like this word fool means um, the reality is like they're delusional. Reality is a mystery to them. They have bought into their own hype. They, they drank the Kool-Aid. They drank their own Kool-Aid. Anyway, this word is used 13 times in the King James. Uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty-five. because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. That word foolishness is the same word that Jesus uses in Matthew 5.22. And then uh, let's go back to the concordance here. Uh, first, or 1 Corinthians 3.18 let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. In other words, he needs to, if, he, if he's really wise in this world, he needs to divest himself of the wisdom of this world and take upon himself the wisdom of God. All right, let's just, let's just work, let's work our way up. Of course, you've got uh, 1 Corinthians 4.10. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, honorable, but we are despised. Of course, that word fools is moros, and Paul's being sarcastic there, and there's no need to give a lot of commentary on that. Matthew 23.19. Ye fools and blind for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Jesus here called people fools and blind. Now, wait a second. Is Jesus a hypocrite? Because here he says, if somebody says thou fool, you're going to be in danger of hellfire. So is it a sin outright to call somebody fool? Well, Obviously not, because Jesus did it. And, of course, you have Matthew 23, 17, you fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. Again, same context to the scribes and Pharisees that have set themselves in the seat of Moses. They've usurped the authority of God. Moses, not Moses is not God, but God gave the authority to Moses, and they usurped that authority. They're supposed to be 
uh, listening and sitting at the feet of Moses. They're not supposed to be sitting in the, the seat of Moses. You're supposed to be sitting at Jesus' feet, not in his seat. That should be a t-shirt. We should sit at Jesus' feet, not in his seat. Um, that's it. The uh, Oh, we lose our, our peace over such small things. Yeah, the older I get, the less I've been out of shape I get over things. Not that I don't care. I, it's just not worth the arguments. Upset stomach and broken relationships. You got that right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. The funny thing is, and Connie, we're going to get right back to answering your question. The funny thing is, hey, hey, Alabama, I've had some people in my life that because I don't care what they do, they have labeled me, they, 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 have, they are angry at me because they say, well, you just don't care about me. You just go, like, no, I just, you're, you're, you want to go down a path of life. I don't care what you do. Do, do you, I'm not going to follow you, but go do whatever you want to do. And, and why would you get mad at me over that? This may evoke a, I don't know response, but what on earth were the people thinking of Luke 11 when they accused Jesus of casting out demons by Beelzebub? Huh? They, they were morose, mo morose, moron. What, what's that? What's that Greek word? We've been looking at moros or moras. They were dull, foolish, wicked, <laughs> blockhead, absurd, dull, stupid. They were impious, foolish. They were wrapped up in a mystery. They were delusional. They could not think about that wonderful. And, and this goes right along with what Connie asked. Think about that wonderful argument that Jesus laid out. Do you do you think if I'm if I'm casting out if my if my miraculous power comes from the devil, do you think that I would work against the devil? That's dumb. You should be able to ascertain that if Jesus is casting out demons, then he's he's not doing it by the power of the demons, of the devils, of devil, of the devil himself. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. I, I've seen one recently accuse you of stuff publicly on Facebook. He messaged me privately saying you loved causing a church split in Canada. He blocked me by the way. So I don't have the message anymore. No, I've, I, pr yeah, again, it's not a split whenever the split is over right and wrong. And incidentally, um, yeah, that, I didn't, I didn't cause a split. I just pointed out a problem that was pre-existing, And I said, we're going to shine a light on this. And instead of sticking around and taking care of it, well, you know what happened anyway. Um, so back to this idea of fool. So, uh, so uh, Scott Beck, th that is definitely, and I don't know answer, but I do know that they were they were being fools. Now let me. Uh oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We're going to walk through this again. All right, Titus three nine. Uh, exactly, John, you got that right. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. I think maybe that this is a good definition, working definition of the word fool, unprofitable, vain, empty. I heard Robert R. Taylor describe the definition of the word fool as it's used even throughout the Old Testament into the New Testament as an empty-headed, a foolish man, a, a one who is a fool, is an empty-headed, empty-hearted individual that is only concerns himself with the affairs of outward appearance, of how things look, and and that that's a that's a perfect way of describing an idea, the idea of sanctimony. So many times, and 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 whenever whenever Jesus uses the term to the Pharisees 
the same term is used in Matthew 5, 22. He's basically accusing them of sanctimony. You are outwardly pious and, and concerned so much with the outwardness, but on the inside, you're empty. There's nothing to you. You're unclean. You're vain. You're empty-headed, empty-hearted, vain people that are only concerned with the outward appearance. I mean, they, they painted white the sepulcher and they washed the outer cup. Like that was one of the things Jesus said in the, in that sermon. All right. Now back to, so we, we read Titus three, nine, uh, Titus or second Timothy two twenty three, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife. The word foolish here, morose. Or mora, moros, probably. Um, and then, of course, you have the Matthew 5, but we won't look at that. Uh, we, we've got that open. Oh, come on. Where, where, where is it at? Where am I at? Oh, Matthew 25, 8. And, and the foolish, this is the fir foolish virgins as opposed to the wise, and the foolish and unto the wise give us of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. So Jesus calls these virgins foolish. Now, granted, it's a parable, but still. So we, we've seen how this word is used in the New Testament. It's, it's obviously not a sin to use the word. It's obviously not a sin in all context to call somebody a fool because our master used the word. All right. Um, now let me go to first Corinthians 1536. Nope. Okay. The, uh, the first Corinthians, whenever Paul says thou fool, well, that's, that's, uh, Afron or Afron, depending on how you pronounce your olive and it's mindless, stupid, ignorant, egotistic, rash, unbelieving, um, and it is from a root word, friend, which is um, it's middle, like it's mid. The, the, as the kids would say today, they would say mid, okay? So here's the deal. Let's go to the context, and it's about anger, okay? If we argue with a fool, those listening will not be able to tell who's who. Yes, and incidentally, that's a... Danny, you could almost make a podcast in and of itself about the juxtaposition of this verse in Proverbs. Uh, suffer, uh, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him. And then the very next line is, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he become wise in his own deceit. So there's a there's a sense in which we gotta we we need to abstain from from answering a fool according to his folly or, or answering a fool. And then there's a sense in which we need to answer a fool. So uh, that would make a podcast in and of itself. Now I 100% agree with your statement there. Uh, it's kind of like the illustration of uh, fighting with a buzzard. Uh, you get in a puking match, which uh, with a buzzard ever want both of you get covered. And the difference is the buzzard likes it. Wrestling with a pig, you both get covered in mud and pig poop, but the pig likes it. Terry Crooks, I'll get your um, comment here in just a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this context from Connie. And then probably what I have queued up in the, in the, for the video section, we'll just do that for Monday's podcast. All right, Matthew 5, 22, or 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. This is Lex Talionis. This is, uh, or excuse me. <laughs> I had too many things on my mind at once. And when I picked one to come out of my mouth, I picked the wrong one. That's what you get for not giving 100% concentration to the thing that you're saying. Okay. Well, hello, Kim Wade. Good to see you. What is the definition of fool? Well, it's, uh, a blockhead. It, it well, it depends. There's two or three different words used for fool in the Bible, but uh, basically, it's an empty-headed, empty-hearted person who's delusional that that cannot discern reality. It's a it's a person that thinks that um, 
a, a woman should be able to um, abort her child up to the point of birth as long as it's in the in, in the in the mother's body. And that same person says, but the father needs to pay child support for the nine months the baby is in the womb. That's a fool. That's a delusional person that cannot ascertain and discern reality. All right. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, which really should read murder. That's the taking of innocent life. Uh, killing is not prohibited. The word is murder. Kill has too much uh, nuance, but it's murder. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. All right, so if you kill somebody, you're going to be in, if you murder, if you take an innocent life, you're going to be in danger of judgment. That's eternal consequences. But I say unto you, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you're going to be in danger of the judgment. Now, here's what I think. Kim Wade, yeah, willful ignorance, probably, yeah. I would, I would say that that would definitely fall under the purview of the definition of fool. Absolutely. In fact, I, I would, I think, in about if I had about five minutes where I could go through the Book of Proverbs, now, I couldn't do it live. I'd have to actually go look for some verses so I wouldn't be able to communicate with you while I was doing it. But I think if I had about five minutes, I could go to the Book of Proverbs. And I could find some proverbs that would teach that very thing, that a person who is who is willfully ignorant is a fool. If either they don't care, or either they intentionally don't care. Oh, wait a second! Intentionally not knowing, or knowing and not caring. Yeah, e either one. That that's a fool. All right. Um. So he here's what Jesus says, verse twenty two. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Now, it is very possible that what we have here, and this, this, is, this is kind of the direction I lean, Connie, that what we have here is a progression of magnitude and gravity. If you're angry with your brother and you don't have a reason to be angry with your brother, you're in danger of judgment. In other words, you may think about church discipline. You may have to be judged by the church. And when I say church, your local community in the context of, of what Jesus is saying, okay? In other words, you're, you're going to be, you're gonna be uh, condemned the, the word is chrysis. It's um, a separating, a sundering, a selection, a judgment, an opinion or decision given concerning anything. In other words, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you will be judged by your immediate circle of influence, your family and under the Jewish tradition. Uh, but if you say to your brother, Raka, and that word raka is an Aramaic transliteration into Greek. It's only used one time, but it's an Aramaic term of bitter contempt. And it's an empty one. That is, thou worthless, raka. This, think about your building up resentment. It's a term of reproach used among the Jews and under the time of Christ a senseless, empty-headed man. It is very possible that the word raka could be translated into English, fool. It fits the definition, okay? And I think this is Jesus making a point here of the gradient nature. Sin always takes you farther than you ever wanted to go, keeps you longer than you ever wanted to stay, and you do things you never intended to do. So think about Cain and Abel. Cain was angry with his brother, and he did not have a cause to be angry. That incurred the judgment of God, and it would have incurred the judgment of Cain's immediate family as well, and they would have had to take him to the side and talk to him and calm him down. 
In fact, that's what that word judgment means. There's a separation associated with it. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. Now, this is a, this is a progression. I'm angry with my brother without a cause. And if somebody finds out about it, they're going to take me to the side and they're going to give me a talking to, they're going to admonish me. But now if that doesn't happen, now remember, you're only in danger of it. Okay, so now it, once, I, once I separate myself, or excuse me, once I've angered my, I'm angry at my brother without a cause, in other words, I just have some resentment built up. If, if, I don't, if I'm not admonished or I don't change course, then I'm going to escalate. Now I'm going to do something, and this is action. Whosoever shall say, that is action, to his brother, Raka. So now you have thought it, now you've said it, and you've engaged him. What well, now that's a beef between two people, and you'll be in danger of the council. So if you go to your brother like that, and it's found out, you may be hauled before the local council, maybe, maybe hauled before the magistrate of the, at the city gates. Remember, in Jewish custom, they... The, in, in ancient times, the, it's like the city hall. You'd go before a judge. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Now, to me, when I look at this definition of this term and the content here is once it goes to thou fool, you have gone the, you, you, your, your white hot rage that you, do, that you have without a cause has manifest itself into action and then it has died down to a slow burn that will power your engine of hatred forever. Once you're able to say fool about your brother for whom you had no cause to be angry, all right, that's the key. You had no cause to be angry with him in the first place, but you've called him fool. You have written him off in your mind. And you're treating him as if he doesn't exist. You don't care about him. You're, you're just, you're apathetic towards him. You're just, he's there. You're, you wouldn't, you're not going to go out of your way to harm him, but you're certainly not going to go out of, out of your way to help him. You do not love him any longer. Folks, that is what it's meant by calling somebody a fool. And if once you get to that point, then you hate your brother. See, I can still I can be angry at somebody without a cause and still love them. I can snap and 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 call them raka and 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 treat them with contempt. I may be even I may be even bop them in the nose, and I can still love them. But once you just Wipe your hands of them. Say, well, they're just, you, we're writing them off. They're just fools. Well, go to go read First John. And what about hating your brother whom you have seen while loving God whom you have not seen? The Apostle John says you can't do it. So that's a long way around the bush, Connie, to say, I mean, a long way around the bush to say, if you call a person a fool, if you write them off with no reason, in other words, you, you go all the way back. If you, if you, if out of anger, you go through that progression and you have no reason. In other words, your brother had not trespassed against you. You don't have a cause. Then you're da in danger of hellfire. It absolutely is more than using, and, and that's the thing. If it were more, if it were only using the word fool, then you got a problem because Jesus called the Pharisees fools on more than one occasion. That's right, and that's going against what Jesus said for us to do. And so many have edged out, edged love out of their heart and replaced it with hatred. You got that right, and uh, yeah. So, Connie.
When the New Testament says call no one fool, what does it mean when someone is called fool today? Uh, sometimes folks don't, sometimes people are called fools and they don't have a right to be called a fool. Um, now, in the context, why is Jesus saying this? So in the new covenant, you need to leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way first and be reconciled with thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. And you need to agree with thine adversary that would be your brother quickly while you are in the way with him. Because if you don't, he can go to the magistrate and deliver you to the magistrate and you will be thrown in prison. This is on earth, by the way, and you will not be let out until you pay the uttermost farthing. Now, think about it in spiritual terms. If you've been angry with your brother without a cause and you have come to them and you have been angry towards them, maybe you have harmed them in some way or you've hit them or you've, you know, yelled at them and then you've just been like okay i'm writing you off right, uh, fool you're done you need to go make that right before the next worship service because the judge you're going to go to before the judge you're going to come before for that is god almighty and you will be cast into prison and you will be cast into prison until you paid the uttermost farthing the problem is you, you'll never be able to pay the uttermost farthing. You're not going to be able to pay that debt because we cannot pay our own sin debt. That's the context of that. Connie Barden, that's what was confusing. Christ did it, yes. And the difference is the people Christ called a fool, they deserved it. He had a cause. So uh, good stuff. Now, I feel like there was, where, where was... Was it Terry Crooks that had a, I feel like right here, Jesus cautions us to, rem, to re, why can I not read? Hold on. Jesus cautions us to refrain from harboring unrighteous anger, which may escalate to murder. He also explicitly instructs us to avoid derogatory remarks and name calling. These forms of verbal abuse can expose the genuine intentions of our hearts and minds for which we will be held accountable in judgment. Yes, Terry Crooks, you're a rather eloquent individual. Um, I appreciate that. For I mean, I appreciate you for more than that, but the, the, way, you, the way you write, you, you must, I don't, well, I was going to make an assumption there. I was going to say you must have had, you either were reared in a household uh, of people that spoke very eloquently or somewhere along the line, you uh, you have put a lot of work into writing eloquently. Not everybody can do it. I can't. When I try to write eloquently, it comes off like you fed a bunch of lines into chat GPT. <laughs> it sounds terrible. So what I try to do is I try to write as just as direct as possible with no uh, – no descriptions or nothing, no metaphor, just writing direct. Anyway, sorry. I, back to the show. All right. Um, now, let me, let me do this. I'm going to go here under captions. And uh, remember, uh, we have an Instagram page that we don't ever promote, Understanding the Time. Now, if you're wondering, Tony, why is your Instagram not Christianity Now? Because I tried 9,000, and, and I'm, I, I've, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, I'm, I, I don't exaggerate. But I tried it 9,497 times to do some kind of form of Christianity now. It didn't work. So understanding the time did. If you are so inclined, understanding the time on Instagram. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to put up the tip jar and just know that if you want to support us monetarily, every way to do that is in the show notes. You can do a $5 a month on Substack. You can do Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash Christianity, Christianity Now, and that's for as little as a dollar a month. But you can send a PayPal right here to nearchurches at gmail.com. Right now, during this stage of our brand, during this season, 
every dollar is going into advertisement and growing the brand. So w obviously you can see the fruits of that have paid off. That is all you folks. Thank you so much. Uh, do you still put stuff on TikTok? Uh, yes, kind of. Um, the articles that I narrate on Substack, there is this free uh, program or free website called Visla. And what I can do is I can, I can upload my uh, sound to there, my audio file, and it will take and it will, through artificial intelligence, render a video and put some music with it. And it's just really neat. And it doesn't always get it right. Some, a couple of the videos I hadn't been able to use because it's used not good, not good uh, stock footage. But it's kind of neat. And they, they get a couple hundred views per video. And I don't do it regularly. But right now, that's all I'm doing on TikTok. It's just a bandwidth thing. Um, all right. Hold on just a second. Let me... Uh, B, search the door. Sir, sir, oh, man. I put... I'm just going to call you B. Great topic. Thank you. And I butcher people's names. I'm sorry. Um, let me get here to uh, Kim Wade's comment. Where is this comment? How much to get the tote bag? Uh, actually, there is. Uh, I've, I've, got, I've got some help with a, a merchandise store that we're going to sell branded merchandise with the Christianity Now logo on it and with silly phrases put on T-shirts. Um, so, yeah, how much to get the tote bag? I mean, if you, uh, if we, we, I, don't know what, I don't know what a tote bag would cost. Uh, name calling, if it is true and not out of anger, is that wrong? Uh, I don't know. It depends, Kim, on what you mean by wrong. Um, I would say it's never a good thing. It's never profitable. Um, it depends. Remember, Jesus name called. Remember, um, well, let's do this. We're going to search the book of Matthew. Oh, no. Hold on. Let's do the New Testament. Oh, it's Luke. I, I would have bet you a dollar to a moldy donut. It was in Matthew. All right. Listen to this. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, to Jesus, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, unto them and this is one of the bosses' statements in the Bible, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee, so forth and so on. Um, Jesus called Herod a name. Was he wrong? Was he in sin? <sighs> Listen, my, my, my suggestion is don't lose your cool. Don't lose your temper. Uh yeah, G okay, the, sorry, if I'd have just looked at the, so this defines your question. Like Jesus calling the Pharisees fools, would calling the Pope a fool be wrong? No. Now, it depends on, on how contemptuous you are, I suppose. Um, yeah, that's right. I doubt the scribes and the Pharisees had Jesus' best interest in heart at heart, telling him to leave like that. You got that right. Let me go over here to Jude. We're going to look at Jude chapter 1, not chapter 2. Give me just a second. I can't ever remember where this is. Um... Oh, I thought it was earlier. All right. Verse 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which are spoken before the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. So on and so forth. That's not it. 
What is speaking evil of dignitaries? Is that not Jude? Oh, well, I'm losing my mind. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak, in, 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 there it is, speak evil of dignities. All right, let's, let's go to Jude. And let's look at something. Because th this is something that, it, it bothers me a lot. All right. The word is dignities. The word is doxa. And you you know doxology, okay? The doxology. Um, the word doxa is um, dignity or glory, honor, praise, worship. This is what I'm thinking is going on. Because here in the context is Jews saying, likewise also these, the whoever people is bothering the church at the moment, they're filthy dreamers, defile the flesh, despise dominion, and they speak evil of dignities. Then he, he goes, verse 9, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, which I believe that's a reference to Zechariah third. Uh, Zechariah 3, about the church of Moses, uh, the, the children of Israel as a whole, uh, durst not bring against him a railing accusation. Uh, the word railing here is blasphema. It's, it's a reproach, a slander, a vilification. The archangel Michael didn't vilify Satan. Slander, detraction, injurious speech to another's good name, impious or reproachful speech, injurious to divine majesty. Here's the thing. I think this is talking about people who slander the government, not slander, people who talk bad about the government. You know, I have zero respect for Joe Biden as a person other than the respect that I would give any soul who is made in the image of God. I do respect his position, and I pray for him, and I'm very careful about what I say about Joe Biden. I try not to make it personal. I critique his job as a president, and I talk about the verified things in his life that show him to be a miscreant and unfit for the office. People in the military understand this, and they get it, because you have to respect the rank. You don't have to respect the man. And when I say respect, I mean you, you have to give every individual the respect that you would give someone that's made in the image of God. But beyond that, respect has to be earned. And I think that these dignities, remember, in Romans chapter 13, give honor to whom honor, glory to whom glory. In fact, I wonder, I'm just curious. I could, I'm, I, this, this may be a big old nothing burger, but I'm going to go over there and check that. All right, Romans 13, where's the verse I'm looking for? Yeah, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. Nope, sorry, that's, uh, that's not the same word. This was a nothing burger. But the point is this. These government officials are the ministers of God. And I remember whenever Paul got slapped by the high priest, he said something very insulting. And they said, do you blaspheme God's anointed or something, some such? 
And Paul said, well, I, I wish he wasn't a high priest because we're not supposed to talk bad about the high priest. I think when it comes to people who are, who are in authority, the governments and stuff like that, I think we need to be careful. Now, that's Joe Biden, that's Donald Trump, that's Vivek, Ramas Vivek Ramaswamy, and, and it is. It's Vivek like cake, according to him. But the point is this. I, th I think you've got to be careful. I, I think you can't be blasphemous. You can't say it with contempt. If I'm talking about the Pope, I'm going to talk about the Pope's ideology. I'm going to talk about what he teaches. And I'm going to talk about what he does as the Pope. And if his name is John, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about John. And I'm only going to talk about the things that he does that's verified that I know that I can speak about without bearing false witness. I think as long as you make sure that you're you're being factual and you're not speaking in contempt, that you will be in the room of the Archangel Michael. In other words, listen, you know, I hope the Pope obeys the gospel, but until then, his fate is in the hands of the Lord, and the Lord rebukes him. That, that's, that's kind of the way Michael handled Satan. Michael didn't rebuke Satan. said, the Lord rebuke you. Anyway. <clears throat> so, yeah, Kim Wade, when it, when it pertains to religious matters, no, call it, calling the Pope fool in and of itself is not sinful. It's not bad because he is a fool. He's the definition of a fool. In fact, he's even wise in his own eyes. He has fallen prey to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That is easy to see. But if if your if your attitude is such where you're contemptuous and you just you just got to be careful with that. Mind your heart. Remember, mind your heart. There's always a, a, an issue of metaphysics. Mind your heart. That that's the that's the that's the advice. Thank you, Tony. Well, you're very welcome. All right, right here, Terry Crooks. Jesus was justified in IDing. Uh, bleh. Jesus was justified in identifying individuals' characters, as he has the wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to do so. As humans, we cannot know the thoughts fully, or fully understand the actions of others. Therefore, we should exercise self-control. Yes, we should be very careful about labeling individuals. This is why, man, my my golden rule in life. I mean, I will, I will, I will walk a thousand miles not to get entangled in the intentions of people. I do not care what motivates your actions. I care about your actions in so much as they affect me and mine. And I care about your actions in so much as they affect your soul, obviously. I mean, we're, you know, we're all trying to get to heaven together, but I'm talking about day-to-day -day living in my life right here where I am in the flesh and blood trying to get through this world I, I live with my wife and my two children. Actually, me and my my wife and I are kind of roommates. We rent a house with our two children. They <laughs> they 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 they're acting like they act like grown folk. Well, they are grown folk. Sorry. Back to the podcast. Um, I don't care about motivation. Like if somebody comes up on to me on the street and hits me in the face. I don't care why they did that. I just care that I'm hit and I'm care. I care that they never, ever do that again. So I'm going to take action to make sure that doesn't happen or, or to make sure that he doesn't hit me again. And that may be neutralizing that threat. That may be, you know, pushing him and getting away, whatever. But I don't care why he hit me. That that's one thing that that's one thing that separates in, in the United States of America. And quite frankly, in, Canada as well, the the liberal left and the conservative right. The conservative right is doesn't overly concern itself with motivation. They just concern themselves with action. While the liberal left, they are all about motivation and they care less about the action. Therefore, if their action is a net negative, as long as your intentions were positive, then your action is justified. And that's just it's a terrible metric to live your life, by which to live to live your life. 
Connie Barton, it was a good question. I, I love that that passage of scripture. And I love that I, I like teaching church discipline because Matthew chapter five is what to do if you realize you have sinned against somebody and they don't know it. Matthew chapter 18, 15, and following is what to do if somebody has sinned against you and they don't know it. Either way, you take care of it quick, fast, and in a hurry. Folks, we got the show lined up for Monday. We're going to talk about uh, walking circumspectly, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what is your price. And I found that video from James O'Keefe, and I've got some some notes. Uh, I want to turn your attention to the comment section and the two the two links that I shared. One is a link to the article for Substack. Um, I wrote an article about the tale of Lady Godiva. Lady Godiva was, uh, I think, she, 11th century Coventry, England. Uh, she was married to the lord of the land, and he was oppressively taxing the townspeople. And she said, you need to not tax them so bad. And he says, oh, but I need to. And she said, and he, he I believe it was him that, that, that said, well, if you want me to not, um, if you want me to not take, if you want me to not uh, tax them so bad, then ride through the town on a horse naked. And of course, she had this very, very long flowing hair. And you've probably seen Lady Godiva costumes where it's flesh-colored onesie with a big, long wig. And the idea is that she covered herself as much as she could with her long hair. But what happened is she sent out an edict to the town folks and said, listen, I'm going to be riding through town. I want you all to shut your shutters and, and don't look because I'm going to be naked. And the townspeople respected her so much, and they wanted to protect her chastity and her modesty for the Lord and for her and for themselves. So she rode, and there was just one person named Tom who bored a hole through his shutter, and he wanted to take a peek because curiosity got the better of him, and forevermore he's known as Peeping Tom, so we know what a Peeping Tom is, and they ended up blinding him for what he saw. Well, I narrated that story, and I uploaded it on YouTube, and then I wrote an article the tale of Lady Godiva, Compassion, Modesty, and Consequences. So I would love for you to read the article and go listen to the narration of the story of Lady Godiva. It's a, it's a, it's a really short video. I think it's like four minutes. But that would be great. And incidentally, like, subscribe, and share. Um, we need to walk circumspectly. Wait a second. We need not to walk circumspectly? since we are no longer under the old law. <laughs> Your puns. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to give it away. I'm going to see if, uh, I'm going to see if anybody besides me got it. It's a good one. All right. Um, oh, thank you. It shall. I mean, I just, I just, I just got to take an English test. Well, folks, this has been Tony Brewer with cogitations, Connie Barden, you take care of your problems between the two of you. Don't air it on Facebook. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, just Bible that. All right, this has been Tony Birth Cogitations. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, let me get the captions back up for the tip jar. Uh, send us donations or whatever you'd like to help us with the show and promote the show, www.nearchurches at gmail.com. And then... Uh, Podbean, Apple Podcast, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Substack, and then check out those links I shared in the comment section. God bless y'all. This has been Tony Birth Cogitations, and we'll catch you on the flip side.